What's up guys, it's Hawaii Legend, and thank you for tuning in to DCUO How to Tank, Guides and Tutorials. Now in these videos I'm going to be going over all my tips, tricks, and loadouts of all the different tank powers. We'll be having a video on Fire, Earth, Atomic, Ice, and Rage. Now my goal for these videos is to really help out the community, expand the community, and develop players, develop tanks that may not know all the information that tanks like me or other great tanks know. but really give you guys all the resources you could so that one day you can get there you will be able to go for the SM completions the server first on a raid or just being the best tank you possibly can be I wanna be here for you in this video today we will be going over each of the following I'm putting timestamps above so that if there's any specific part in the video you wanna watch you're welcome to go there and watch whatever it may be or you're more than welcome to watch all the way through the video and gain as much knowledge as you can from the things that I'm trying to teach. So before we get started on the loadouts and whatnot, I do want to go over my opinions as a tank in this game. As far as your loadout and the way you run things, I don't believe that there's any specific way that you have to do this. I don't, I'm not the person that's going to tell you, oh, you have to be this power for this raid and run it exactly this way with this exact loadout. No. What I do believe is that there's responsibilities, like a checklist, that us tanks have to be able to do on the team in order to succeed. If you're able to do these checklists and responsibilities in any loadout, then it's a viable loadout. So the first responsibility of a tank would be establishing aggro. Taunting the boss, pulling the adds, continuously holding aggro throughout the fight. That's obviously a very important factor. The next one would be controlling the flow of the fight. So, knowing the mechanics, being able to change around your loadout to help out with mechanics. If you need to throw in a group breakout, throw it on, whatever it may be. And then communicating with your team to help them adjust. Avoiding damage, which is the third one. This is very important because I know a lot of tanks try to say, oh, I'm the bulkiest tank out there. I can take all the damage in the world. Okay, sure. But is it really helping out your team? Are your healers going to have to spam priority you the entire raid? Or are you going to be able to use your counters, your movement, your placement in a raid to avoid so much damage that if someone else on your team messes up, your healer can cover them? Now, the fourth one is the most important and very obvious as well is to survive. Any loadout you, that you go into a raid with, you're going to have to survive with. Every fight in this game begins and ends with a tank. That's it. The raid does not happen without you as a tank. So if you cannot survive in a raid, you're going to have to change your loadout, change out your power tray, figure out something that will get it complete. So the reason I call this the all around loadout is this is for the tanks that you're only able to get three artifacts up which is perfectly fine. This is the most safe play loadout to me that I can give you where if you get three artifacts you're pretty much good all around. You can cover a lot of different situations, there's not a lot of niche play that you can do, and this is pretty much what you go with. You're gonna have the Manacles of Force, which you know you can read the description for that if you're not sure what that is. The next one after that is gonna be the Mystic Symbol of the Seven. For these two ones, it's pretty safe across the board for most powers to run these two. Um, very good overall artifacts. The last one though, which just came out and I love it a lot, is the Cersei's Mask. I'm going to be going over with you guys how I rotate the Cersei's Mask with my shields on this loadout because I did switch up how I play as fire because of this artifact specifically. As far as my utility belt goes, it's always going to be the same with dampening fields, breakout trinket, and orbital and then chronometric emitters. I'll have those in different videos to explain how you guys can use them and what they are if you are not sure what they are yet. As far as my skill points go, I always do one skill point into my shield and then one into my rifle. This is pretty much because of whatever range I decide to play as a tank. If I gotta be up close or do a lot of lunges for like Zeus and FGSE, then I use the shield. Or if I wanna play distance, I use the rifle. As far as super speed goes, 
I get the normal super speed deal, dash attack, phase dodge, and just because I have the excess skill points, I get all the breakouts. But if you don't have too many skill points, you can just get those two resistance, and you'll be fine for that. Um, like I said, though, I just have a lot of excess skill points to me, so I just threw them in there to help out with the power. As far as your iconics go, Amazon Deflection, Lasso, and Hard Light Shield, it's pretty much the go-to to have on any power you go, any loadout, just because you can always switch, right? Depending on the situation, whatever you're running, you can just swap your loadout. It's good to have those unlocked. As far as my stat points go, I go hybrid, the 20 and 40 into my crit heals and crit magnitude. After that, I go 295 into my health. Um, that is the most important stat for a fire tank. And then after that, you can kind of switch this one up how you do it. I put 100 into my resto because I like that 10% bonus. And then I put the rest into my dom because I want to increase that dom bonus that I have for there as far as percent wise. I don't feel like 153 into my um, resto is valid enough to just have stacked into resto versus having them split between resto and dom like that. That's up to you. Um, one of the reasons also that I do dom and resto is if you can see right there my base healing multiplier and my shield multiplier is affected by my dom and my resto. So by having the percentages up on both in my stats it really helps out with both healing and my shields, which overall is great to have as a tank, especially one for fire where I can heal my back, heal myself back so much. Um, for my loadouts, I always usually go engulf for the first move, stoke flames for the second move. It's a good clip move to have, so I can go from engulf to stoke flames or backdraft to um, stoke flames. Third move being backdraft. And the next one's immolation because same deal, I can always clip X to A because uh, I'm on Xbox, um, or B to A to go engulf to emulation or backdraft to emulation. This next one where dash attack is, this is what I call the situational move. It's usually going to be my situational move on every power I go, but this is the move that you can swap things out for. So if it's COUE, I can go to Amazon Deflection because you can't go super speed and use dash attack in there. If I need to, I could put phase dodge in there if I needed that for whatever situation. If we're doing like FIE at the end, I want to run lasso and keep the ads on me, I can throw that. Or for crit FTTFE, I can throw in the group breakout to help my team from not getting pulled by that move. If you decide to run a super um, and you like one of these, perfectly fine as well. Um, but I just want you guys to get the point down of that move right there, that fifth slot, is for your situational move. Whatever is going to help you out the most. In. The last one after that is going to be a hard light shield. And again, that's um, a great shield to have, best in the game to me. Well, besides maybe like, you know, gemstone for earth, but great shield to have on every tank power, especially with how we're going to rotate the mask. Speaking of that, though, let's go into the mask. So right here, we're going to look at the mask uh, artifact so I can explain it to you guys real quick. Um, great artifact, again, just came out. So not too many people will really know what it's about or how to use it. But the mask increases um, your incoming heals by 30% after one of your shields pops in layman's terms. So right here, I'm throwing up my hard light shield. And then after a bit, whenever the shield's done, you're going to see it pop. And then you're going to see these purple swirls go around the enemy and then this whole animation go around my character. So right there, you've seen it and you see how there's the whole animation around me. Those are the six seconds that, you know, the ad stuns and then I get the increased healing by 30%. One thing to take note of is this does stack with the mystic symbol, so it's a 40% incoming heal, which is huge. So, after that, um, basically, I ch after learning about this artifact, I changed up my rotation to where I go hard light shield, and then when it pops, the, the mask procs, right? So I'll go around doing whatever I need to do as a tank. And then as soon as my hard light shield pops, I'm going to go into Immolation. Um, because right now I have the mask propped, right? And Immolation, it takes a while for this shield to go down because it's a mitigating shield. So because it's a mitigating shield, it's not going to insta-pop from so much damage. So I'll have that buff restacked. So right there you see the animation around me again, right? So it took all that time, and I had that reanimation go, and then my hard light shield is back up. So basically what I'm trying to get the point across to you guys is 
you can have the mask buff basically unlimited for the entire duration on fire. So you go hard light shield right there, you proc it. You're basically getting mad heals. It's really hard to die, honestly, when you have immolation up and you have the buff from the Cersei's mask going. But then as soon as the immolation goes after that, it's rebuffed. And you can already see that my hard light shield's ready to go at the bottom, so I'll wait the six seconds out and then repop my shield. There are some circumstances in crit or other things where you take mad damage where you know your hard light shield is going to pop early, your immolation is going to pop early, but it's about realistically a four to five second gap. Five is really pushing it. Four, three to four is um, probably what you're looking for between shields where you won't have the buff on of the mask. But still, it's been really beautiful to have in this loadout and it's definitely saved me a lot of times being able to rotate my shield like this and keep the mask procced almost 100% of the time. So with that being said, let's go into some gameplay so you guys can see how I use this loadout. So the boss fight I chose for this one is FBE second boss fight. I feel like it can be a messy boss fight for a lot of teams, so I took it as a good opportunity to show you guys the all-around advantages of this loadout. You guys can depict for yourselves what you like and what you don't like, and maybe be able to enhance your gameplay in your own ways. Because like I said, with this video, I just want to show you guys how I do things. You don't have to do these things the same way as I do. Um, again, there's that list of responsibilities I feel like you should be able to fulfill as a tank with any loadout you run. But it doesn't have to be my way. It doesn't have to be any other creator, content creator on YouTube's way. Whatever works for you. Just pick what you like, pick what you don't like, and figure out whatever is most comfortable for you and make it work. Um, you'll be able to see my shield rotation in this loadout, movement, counters, whatever it is that may help you out and help teach you something that you can learn and advance your gameplay with. But I'm just going to let the film roll for now. Watch as much as you want, as much as you can, get everything you can out of this video, and I'll see you guys in the next section.
So this buff tank loadout, it really revolves around a tank running the Dilusor Refractor and having a healer that runs the Starheart Fragment. You could have a troll running the Rings of Azar, but with how many troll loadouts there are and buff trolling being a thing, it's not too worth running. Um, but just between the healer and I, we can get my health up to 460k, which you'll see right here in my stats, which I believe is like a 46k upgrade from what it is um, without the buff from the two artifacts. One thing to note, or a few things to note about this is, I'm a health spec tank, so I'm not full dom and don't have as much dom as I probably could have, which means I'm not giving the whole team as big of a health bonus as I could if I was earth or ice. However, because I'm fire and I get 50% more health, it almost double stacks the buff towards me, and that's why I'm able to get from 414k to almost 461k. Now if you look here at these stats that I put up, um, I had some friends of mine that were in that clip there all take screenshots or videos of their stats before the buff and then after the buff. So you can see all of their health buffs for the healer. It goes from 187k to basically 210k. And then for the might and precision DPS, as you can see what they go from. So the might went from almost 115 to almost 139k might. And then the precision went from 66k to almost 88k so it is valid it also depends on how your trolls running stuff too um, in all honesty the main buff you're gonna get is from the troll but the health buff is nice to have on your team as well as um, you're adding a little bit of health or a good amount of health to the troll which adds a little bit of might or precision that you would be giving your DPS's so it is viable um, and right here I decided to use crit to show you guys just the survivability and that it is um, good to run and it, it works but just as you guys seen in the last video I'm gonna let this clip play and then you can just can watch pick what you like pick what you don't like and just kind of see like okay this is another viable loadout that's able to happen and I'll see you guys in the next section
Alright, so in this loadout we're going to be really focusing on boosting our defense as a fire tank. Hence why it's called the defense build, right? And the first artifact we're going to start off with is the Everyman prototype. So as you can see, for whatever health gap we're at, so 75% to 51%, 50 to 31, or 30% or lower, we gain a percentage of our maximum amount of health, and it's converted into defense. So the reason this is so great for fire is we innately have the least amount of defense out of all the tanks, but we also have the most health, which is huge because I have 383, almost 384k health as a fire tank, but then only 111, maybe 112 defense um, as a fire tank. And whatever gap I'm at, this Everyman will convert that much health into defense. And this is great to pair up with the Mystic Symbol of the Seven because the Mystic Symbol of the Seven, we already get that that constant 10% increase heals, right? Which is huge. But on top of that, we get 5% of defense for every ad around us up to five ads um, or f up to four ads, which turns into 20% defense. And that can stack with the Everyman prototype to where your Everyman will give you a certain amount of defense based on your health, right? But then that 20% possibly if there's you know that many ads around you it will multiply off that and then add even more defense which is huge the last artifact we're running is a Cersei's mask because again as you've seen earlier if you run that rotation you can keep that buff going basically constantly the entire time and that's huge to have so you're gonna have a whole bunch of defense but then even bigger heals so you just become a way bulkier tank than you ever could have been before as fire which I think is super cool because it really changes up the dynamic of how you can play with fire I run the same um, skill point distribution on this one because again that dom helps out uh, with your resto too on your max heals and your shields so you know especially with immolation being a mitigator shield it adds to your defense right so you're taking even less damage for this one on your situational build um, you can or your situ situational move you can run absorb heat and if you get the hand mod for empowered channeling, you actually get a 5% defense and toughness boost while you're using Absorb Heat. So basically your Absorb Heat, it already does a good amount of heals towards you as a tank. But you're also going to get an additional 5% defense and toughness while you're using that move. Which, having this build focus on defense is a huge positive for it. You don't have to run it. In the clip that I'm showing you... Um, after this explanation, I'm not running it because it's FTTFE crit and I like to run the group breakout for my team. But it's very viable to use and very awesome to use. It's awesome for COUE, it's awesome for FGSE, it's awesome for FE, it's, it's awesome for so many raids. The only thing that I would advise is not to get caught in animation. That's one thing with Absorb P, you can get caught in a lot of mechanics with it. So right there I can move around with it. but it's hard sometimes especially if you jump i'm pretty sure after popping your absorb heat you can't really block and try to roll out of it how you sometimes can just popping it on the ground and not doing anything else but again very very viable and if you don't really have to worry about mechanics then it's going to make you a very bulky tank and it's an awesome move to run so over here i'm around all the ads i'm trying to get as much of a buff on my defense as you guys can see so i can kind of show you guys what statistically it looks like before i show the clip one thing too that I'm going to go over is that the defense fluctuates pretty hard based on especially the everyman prototype which I'll get into but right here I go into my inventory and you can see and I do a flash frame on it that I get up to 150k defense right there from the 112 that I'm normally at base which is awesome and that's not even including what the everyman prototype does for me. So in this clip though this one ended in a wipe but it was something that I decided would be awesome to show for the YouTube because in this one we had our solo healer he went down one of our DPS is switched to heals she ends up going down and then in the end it's really just me and my boy Drizzy Drake who's the DPS in there and like I said at this point no heals no support rules so not even a controller either for power it's just me and a DPS on crit and for those of you who haven't done crit before, the three main ads here hit like trucks. Like they really do. And you can see right here, I'm constantly fluctuating my health and it's pretty scary. But because of this loadout, I'm able to keep myself alive, which I'm gonna go over right now because as you guys can see, my health is constantly low, right? 
but because it's low, the Everyman prototype's giving me a lot of defense because of my complete health. And then after that, the Mystic Symbol of Seven's giving me an extra buff because it's giving that 20% buff towards my defense. So I'm just overall having a ton of defense being shown. Um, as you can see, I'm just taking a ton of hits and staying. It seems like I'm almost thriving at that 25% gap. And they're able to get me low, but they're not able to take me out all the way. And then on top of that, I have the Mystic Symbol of the Seven stacked with the Cersei's Mask. So because of my shield rotation and stuff like that, my heals are doing a lot more than they normally would, which is keeping me alive through all the t hits that I'm taking, and I'm able to keep myself healed in this whole deal. Granted, I gotta still move around a lot and then try to counter where I can or juggle the adds and stun them, but as you guys can see, I'm thriving all the way through. So in this clip, we have another tank in the game in my league named Grammys. He's one of the best tanks on the Xbox server by far. Super good tank. But he likes to run a lot of Gemini loadouts. I personally don't. Um, I don't like not having constant variables and Gemini is just based on you having super. But it is definitely viable. That's just a personal thing with me, right? So don't even take it as a knock towards Gemini loadouts. They are viable. They're doable. Um, and you can definitely rock one. So here I have Grammy showing you guys his stats, his loadouts, and what the Gemini does, which you guys can pause on that and read it if you need to. But he goes over here, does his Gemini, and then shows you guys the buff that it gives, so the 5%, and he shows you what his buff stats are, which is awesome. And in this next clip right here, you're going to see him in FGSE against Zeus, and he just pop in his Gemini to keep himself healed because... Like you've seen in the last clip, he gets that 5% right towards everything, which helps out a ton as um, as fire, especially with the extra resto, the extra dom, everything. Just overall, Gemini can definitely work out. And you see all the other stuff he's running with Absorb Heat to help out his defense, help out his rest, like um, his self heals and all that stuff. Definitely a viable, viable loadout to have. Um, and this is really just to show you guys, you know, you are able to run Gemini. There are plenty of ways to run fire, and we're just really trying to show you guys every possible thing that we could, that we feel is a, a viable loadout for you guys, just to give you guys, you know, every opportunity to make your own class however you feel. So, artifact swapping in general is a newer concept to the game. It's not brand new, but, you know, it's just another way to show how the game's progressing and evolving through time, which I think is pretty cool. There's a lot of DPS I see that do it, a lot of controllers that I see do it. Not too many healers doing it, but as tanks, we wanted to make sure we supplied you with as much information as possible, right? And give you guys the opportunity to say, okay, it's viable to do as a tank. So... With that being said, you're going to have Grammys. I mean, right here, he's showing you guys what he runs on his loadout and the different pieces of armor and all that stuff. But he's going to be swapping between the Gemini and the Everyman prototype, which is a good, you know, valid thing to do. He quick swaps to that, pops a super, gets all the buffs, and goes back to Everyman prototype for that defense buff if he ever loses health. Solid, viable way to do it. Um, you're going to see a clip after this where he goes against Grail and he's going to be, you know, doing that same artifact swap. But on top of that, he's going to be switching between his uh, trinkets on his utility belt as well. And just giving you guys that option of, okay, that's doable as well. I can quick swap in my backup, pop them out for the extra damage, quick swap in my orbital, pop that, and then go back to chronometric emitters or whatever it may be that you want to swap it out. After that, you're going to see a clip of me in COUE, and I'll be swapping out the mask and the refractor. There's a way I do it where after my hard light shield pops and I get that mask buff, I switch real quick to refractor and then do some pulls real quick and then switch real quick into um, or back to the mask before my immolation pops. And if you do it fast enough, you can keep that constant buff on from the mask while giving you and your entire team that big health bonus from the refractor. So two viable loadouts.
pick what you guys like, pick what you guys don't like, and then hopefully we'll be able to help you guys out in the further uh, future with your guys' own loadouts. <music> So that's it for the video guys, thank you so much for watching, if you did like it definitely leave a like and a follow. Um, if you guys would like the chance for a more live interaction with me, I did start up a stream channel on Twitch, Hawaii Legend Gaming, just like the YouTube channel. 
And if you guys have any comments or questions, leave them down below. I love the open conversation and stuff like that, so I will try to reply as soon as I can. Um, I wanted to give a big shout out to Telos, that's the person who makes all the beats and the music in this video. When he gets his YouTube channel up, I'll be posting it in the description if any of you guys enjoy the beats and would like something like that. Big shout out to all my league members and the players on DC that helped out with the clips and the videos and all the different raids. Very grateful for that. And most of all, thank you so much to you, the viewer, for watching my channel. And hopefully there's something that can be gained from watching my content and something that maybe helps you guys out in the game. Um, I'm looking forward to making more videos, so I'll see you guys in my next one. Thanks.